back everybody. We're out in the greenhouse again here and this is day seven of our compost heater being active. Everything is looking awesome in the greenhouse. So we've been out here doing a heavy watering in order to get our tunnel set up. We want to have that ground nice and saturated, nice and moist so we can get our hoops put in the ground so we can throw our poly over it. So that will be the next video is setting up these tunnels. But today we are talking about our geothermal or heated pond. We're going to be setting up and attaching our pond to our compost heater very low in the compost heater so it's not going to pull a ton of heat off of the system itself but it is wrapped around our 55 gallon drum in the compost pile which is very low in the system so we're going to try and draw from that we're going to set that up and hook it up today we've been doing a ton of coverage on this and that is just basically the final last little step we're going to have to take down our aquaponics and get all of that situated so there is a lot to cover and we're going to go check out our compost heater now if all that sounds interesting please consider subscribing to the channel and a huge thank you to all of our subscribers and everybody that's been watching and finds interest in all of this stuff we're trying to give full coverage of everything that we're doing every little step so today is dedicated towards the pond so all of our little crops have really flourished in the greenhouse with the extra heat we've got to get our tunnels and lights set up because we don't have a whole lot of activity from the Sun coming through Lots of green in the greenhouse. Went and got myself two of these clamps here for connecting our hose. I'm gonna show that. I just had it jingling around in my hand here. So just walking up on the compost heater, sitting about, what, 70 degrees in here right now. About 70 degrees, we had a low of 50 and a high of 86 right above our compost heater, blowing about 100 degrees out. Yeah, that water feels warm there. So we're blowing about 104.6. So we've got ourselves this old recycled, nasty looking, but it's all dry, compost heating hose. Now I use this in our small greenhouse, the first compost heated greenhouse we ever had. So I've got all this recycled hose here. With all that recycled hose, I got these fittings. These were about four and a half dollars a piece. I got two of these and they came with hose clamps and I just bought it metal. So I had a good, nice, solid piece that I could reuse for years. So we're going to use this to attach our hose to our hose. So we have these hose lines that we ran out in our compost pile. We are going to be swapping pumps here. Now I want to show the outlets. There is a huge difference in size there. This was the 1100 gallons per minute and this is the 350. And it's just a huge size difference. So. This is more suited to be able to hook up to our hose, our garden hose here. So we'll be able to MacGyver together our connection from our hose to our pump. So I just wanted to share all the little bits and pieces. I'm going to go ahead and start putting this together. Let me add some comments here. You can hear that wind ripping. It is wicked outside today. You can hear it ripping through the tree. It's like 50 mile an hour wind. All the compost heating systems operating with very little sunlight. Having such minimal draw systems, I've got to get my timer set up. I keep saying that, but the timers are coming. I'm going to put another board up and run power to both timers. So this water pump operating here will be on a timer and the one running in our pond will be on a timer. So all of the water pumps, the heavy draw systems, the water pumps draw way more energy than any of these little fans do usually put together. So we can stack fans on one system, but usually only one water pump per system. Well, that was kind of disappointing. I went and bought these from a local hardware store and they told me this would fit the hose. And I always bring pieces, but I didn't today. I ended up using just a little plastic barb that we had on hand here. Very simple connection. So we've got our first piece of hose running down. And we've got our hose connection down here. Now I gave myself a little bit of extra room. So uh, try not to get any dirt in there, but we're gonna connect this to this. We got our two hoses connected together. We've got some extra to pull back down. I wanted to give myself a little bit of slack. Cheap pair of my old pruners works great for cutting all this tubing and piping. I've been out here filling water in here and trying to clean up any debris. We've got a lot of leaves just floating around and stuff. So we're gonna give ourselves right about here. Snip that off there. 
So this is about all we've wasted and I may be able to use this to connect some other lines somewhere down the line. So what we gotta do is attach a pump to this hose that we just ran down and connected. So we've got the whole first half of the system we will be set up once we get a pump attached here. That was no easy task getting that pump attached because the sizes didn't match up. I'm used to working with a little bit larger diameter, inner diameter hose. But I did get it and we're going to get it secured with a hose clamp here. So line ran in to the 350 gallon per hour pump. So everything's ready to go. I just got to hook up the power connections with this side of the system. Let's go get the other half of this ran. These are our power lines. I ran this line all the way from down at the other end there with a decent gauge so we can transmit good power without having any fire issues or anything. So that is what we're going to use as a power source. You can see I have a whole bunch of like recycled clay soil, just not 100% good stuff to use to plant. The rest of our beds are amended very well. You can see just a difference in all the soil when we look around, but that was all excavated out right here where we've not really dug much. So we are going to be turning all of those into clay bricks with just soil that we're going to sift through. Lots more on that coming. Let's get back to what we were doing here. We're going to take this little fitting and he is going right into this hose right here. And I gotta get a hose clamp on there yet. So we've got this little elbow attached. It is pointing this way so we can run back down and dump into the greenhouse pond. So we ran this line alongside the wall, alongside the other lines. And we're going to cut it, attach it to this other fitting back here. And we can start plugging things in and turning things on and brainstorming forward on what I want to do with this once I set it up. We've got a nice solid connection down in here. Both of those lines running in. Solid connection down here. Just a whole mass of transfer lines. Let's get this set up here. So now that all of this is ran, we got both parts of the system. This system will be able to operate just very simple, straightforward. Just wanted to share that. So we are gonna dunk our pump. We've got our positive and negative wires. So I had to pre-start this. Now, the pond water is sitting about 60 degrees. And we're pushing about 87, 85. It should cool off a bit. 84, 83. About 83 degrees constant. It's a pretty decent rate of flow, so we're not going to pick up as much heat, but this rubber hose is going to transfer a whole lot more energy through it than that PEX will, I believe. We've used this in the past for compost heating, so I'm not really trying to transfer tons of energy into the water. I'm more or less looking at this like a geothermal system. So I'm really not looking to heat this up a whole lot. Maybe 70 to 80 degrees would be perfect. So if I overflow it a bit down low in the system, we're just going to keep holding the same temperatures and it shouldn't really negatively impact. We got lucid flow. It's just flowing right in perfectly. That is pretty darn cool. It's awesome to be able to work with all these systems and that's probably as far as we're going today. We created an entire system today to move water. We didn't have anything set up, everything was removed. So we put a pump in, we attached lines all the way out to our compost heater and then back in, ran our lines in and we've got a decent rate of flow. We are flowing quite a bit of water but that's basically what I wanted. So. Like I said, this is as far as I'm going with this today because I'm going to pull all of these plants out of here in the morning. We're going to film a separate video and we're going to start rigging up some type of new setup. I don't know if I'm going to use this aquaponics bin. I may be able to. I'm not sure. I don't know if this rate of flow will overflow that system, so we may have to use a shorter drain tube or an outlet. So there's a lot of things I'm thinking about moving forward with this system of how I want to incorporate our watercress and a little bit of mint as we pull all these out. I can't wait to see how big of a mass of roots
roots is in this thing. We may be able to pull some plants out of this aquaponics biofilter. Being that we don't have a whole lot of sunlight and we're still getting good rates of flow on all of our systems, that's why we put one pump to one system, one 100 watt solar system. So we're not overflowing the energy or the water. We're doing very good on these systems. Now I really do need to get in gear and put my timers on these so we can have better longevity because the temperatures are dropping. I was pretty darn cold when I was working outside. I had the door open with the hose coming in, but that greenhouse heater had it like up to like 86 or 87 in here up at the head space. And then down by the floor, it was like 75 and no sunlight. So being right around 38, 39 degrees outside for a high today was pretty darn cool to have such a hot greenhouse and be able to get a bunch of work done and be comfortable. So we're still blowing a solid 80 degrees, 80.4 or something out of there. That's pretty darn cool. And on that note, I'm going to let everybody go and we will come back in the morning and finish up this system. I kind of figured this greenhouse pond itself would be a multi-part series of videos trying to get everything situated. So if anybody has any other ideas with like maybe some type of DIY waterfall as opposed to using this system here, I could build something. There's a lot of options. I want to brainstorm on this before I set up a new system. We may just run the same thing like I said. So if anybody has any ideas for a different type of system, definitely drop it to me because I'm open to whatever and I can draw it up and I want to consider other things and kind of switch it up a little bit because we had this here for almost a year now.